Martin Luther actually honored Mary. Oh, <gasps> gasp, right? Because Mary was actually honored by both of them. That was one of, by, by Calvin and Martin Luther during the Reformation. That was one of the few things that they actually could agree on. Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. Audrey here. If you are new to me, I post faith videos every single Wednesday and I sprinkle in some homeschool videos as well. In today's video, we are going to be talking about Mary. So we're going to give you a little background on Mary, talk a little bit about the rosary. I'm going to be sharing a couple books that I... All right, so Mary is our mother. We, if, if you are a Protestant watching this, we do not worship Mary. Here's the whole deal with Mary in a nutshell is Mary is the mother of Jesus. Jesus honored Mary and we want to always follow the example that Jesus set for us. And so just as our Lord honored his mother up until his death and thereafter, we too honor Mary. We venerate her. We love her very dearly. She is Mama Mary. She is my mother. Um, she is my spiritual mother. She helps me and she guides me even more so to her son because who better than to know our Lord than Mary. So I, yeah, we ask for her intercession. Um, we don't equate her to God. She is still human. She is not divine. Catholics do not believe that Mary is divine, but she birthed our Lord who is both human and divine. So there you go. And as John chapter two, verse three says, it was the wedding feast at Cana. And, uh, she says, do whatever he tells you to. So there you go. Do whatever he tells you to. And so we listen. All right. So the second part of Mary that I wanted to talk about is I, I've heard that some people kind of get hung up on the fact that we say that she is the queen of heaven. So I wanted to chit chat about this because there can be some confusion with it. When, when you think of the word queen right now, oftentimes you think, well, then you're saying that she's equal to God because she is the queen and a queen is married to a king and our Lord is king and he's like the high priest. So then Mary is equal and she's joined to Jesus. And no, 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 that's not right. So here's where the whole queen thing comes from is biblically, when you look at queen in the Bible and you go back to the Old Testament, right? Tough shoe, I always say it, tough shoe, Old Testament. But the when you think about the ranking, if you will, of a queen and who the queen was, the queen was the mother of the king, not the wife. And so the mother was actually held in super high regard. The king would actually go to his mother and ask for advice. Case in point is Solomon. Solomon, yes, super wise. Asked God, God, you know, ask God, like, hey, God, I want to be the wisest king, like, ever. And God said, wow, that is a wise choice. <laughs> okay, that's a wise choice. And so, yes, like, hey, I'm going to double you. I'm going to double down here on you, Solomon. And I am going to give you, like, all the riches, too. Okay, so Solomon was super wise. But he still honored his mother, the queen the queen. And so when you want to, if you want to go biblically, the queen again was the mother of the king. The king honored his mother. The queen always had a place in the palace, which is why when we think about Mary and what we know about Mary, Mary is the queen because she is our Lord's mother. And so she has a place in heaven, a very high place, a very special place. So we honor her for that as well. Um, I was also asked, is Mary the Immaculate Conception? Uh, yes, Mary is the Immaculate Conception. Our Lord was immaculately conceived. And this is because like when you think about like the Lord, 
why God is not going to come into a just a random girl as like I've heard like it was just like hey, she was just like a little shepherd girl no 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 Mary like so our Lord is like a superhero right like oh, I love superhero movies did you know there's 37 of them like whoa so we're watching all of them with the kids anyway so our Lord is superhero right saving us from our sins crushing Satan opening up the gates of heaven for us. Praise be to God. Cool, man. So when it comes to Mary, Mary what is a spotless victim, right? Now, she still is human, right? She still is human, but she is, she was born still with free will, but she was born sinless. Now, that's really important, and if you want to go biblically again, that goes back to Mary is the new Ark of the Covenant. When you go biblically, you go back to Moses. The Ark of the Covenant had to be made in a specific way, and when it wasn't made in a, hey, when it wasn't made in a specific way, people died, and when it wasn't carried correctly, people died, right? Think about, like, David didn't follow instructions, and it was Uz or, uh, no, 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 no. It was Uriah, right? Yes, it was Uriah. And they didn't carry the ark correctly, right? The ark started to fall. And what happened? Like he tried helping, tried helping God because God is inside of the ark of the covenant. And he went to go catch the ark of the covenant. But wait, that wasn't his job, right? He wasn't allowed to touch it. There were only certain people who were allowed to touch the ark of the covenant because... Well, that's the way God set it up with the Levitical priests from Aaron. Now, when fast forward, like there's a whole line of the Ark of the Covenant. Why would God just go into just a random little girl in a shack in like Nazareth and all that? He wouldn't. Mary is the new Ark of the Covenant. She is the perfect host for our Lord to come into the world. So when you relate the two, it's pretty cool. So there's like your three, your three little points. Here's another awesome thing. When I was doing all of like my digging and stuff with this, super cool, super cool, super rad. So Martin Luther, I was starting to read through some of his sermons, which some of you might look like, why are you reading Martin Luther stuff? You don't know why I've been reading Martin Luther and send me some of Calvin stuff. Cause I know some of you are familiar with Calvin. Supreme Crusader, send me that. Mar I've been reading his stuff because I want to understand what went wrong so that I know how to talk to my children, but also I know how to talk to Audrey too. Martin Luther actually honored Mary. Oh, <gasps> gasp, right? Because Mary was actually honored by both of them. That was one of, by, by Calvin and Martin Luther during the Reformation. That was one of the few things that they actually could agree on. I don't know where the whole like worshiping Mary and Mary is just like normal. Um, remember like we don't, like we know that she's not divine and all that and she, no, she's not equal to God, but somewhere along the way it became like you worship Mary and she's equal to God. But even Martin Luther in one of his sermons from 1568, I think it was, he, in it, like, you can read it because his writings were kept. He says, like, we should all be honoring Mary because she's the mother of God. We don't hold her any higher. So there you go, Mama Mary. All right. So the way that, um, I just wanted to share with you, um, three things. It's, it's daily meditations on the mother of God. If you haven't been introduced to Paul Thigpen, um, I got this from Tan Books and they're really great. It is, it talks all about Mary. It relates, oh, check this out. This actually goes into, oh, okay, I just mentioned David and I just turned to David and Solomon. So see, two for two. Let's see if I can turn to another page and then go to it. But it's 365 days, um, just one page each, just little reflections. There's uh, different Bible readings that are in here, but this is a really, a really great book to get to know our mother. This one, I've talked about this at nauseum. I've been doing 33 days for the past five years or so. This year will make five years. So I think Corbin was turning one when I started this book. And so 33 days gives you more insight into Mary as well. And 
remember that getting to Mary, again, you get closer to Jesus because a mother always knows her child. So that's great. And then I got this one. This is actually for the kids. It's Marian Consecration for Children. And what's really nice about it is there is, just like in the 33 Days for Mary, uh, for the adults, this one for kids has some different uh, readings in it as well. But then at the end, there's actually questions like this one says, can we acquire virtues without any kind of struggle or temptation? And so I found that book to be super helpful for the kids because it's not just me like bleh, reading to them or them reading it to each other. There's questions and I always go back to why are you doing something? And so these questions truly do help. Now, um, when it comes to the rosary every day. Why do I say the rosary? Well, because I'm holding my mother's hand. I'm holding my mother's hand and she told me to do it. And so I'm doing it because when your mama says to do something, well, you do it. And when the Lord says to do something, you do it. And so when we're saying hail Mary, I don't hail in the sense, the biblical sense just means hi. Hi, Mary. Now, when you're talking politically, when you're talking kings and queens and all that, hail me could mean like you're praising and you're worshiping. And someone had brought, made a mention of the word worship, how Catholics view worship and how Protestants view worship. And it's something that I never thought about before. Um, worshiping with a regular sense means that like, oh, I am praising and I am putting someone above God. Worshiping for Catholics just means that I'm praying. Like, that's it. Like, I'm not, I'm not, you know, like looking at a saint or looking at Mary or looking at Joseph and putting them above the Lord at all. Okay, so with the rosary, um, I say the rosary because we have three sets of mysteries. Four, if you want to include the one that uh, Pope John Paul the second said um, that we could include, but I just say three, joyful, sorrowful, and glorious. And the reason why I say them is because it goes through the life of Christ. And so what I do with the kids and what I do with myself is we go through guided imagery with it. And there's also, um, so sometimes I'll put up a picture because one of our children kind of zones out, which easily done with the rosary, but I focus on the life of Christ. So, and it helps me to reflect on how I can be a better Catholic, a better Christian by focusing on what the Lord has done for us. And so like, especially when it comes to the sorrowful mysteries, the agony in the garden, thinking about our Lord sweating blood, like that's like everybody sweats, but like sweating blood because you are seeing what is about to happen. Like that's serious. And so I always think about and visually picture in my mind the scene from the passion right if you've seen the passion you see the lord sweating blood and like trembling and praying right on the rock right garden and then you see satan like going behind so that is always the scene every single time i say the rosary i picture that and then like when he's beaten and stuff and then you know joyful yay you know the nativity like the magi actually coming so rosary focusing on life christ not worshiping mary so we can just end that right there it is not a pagan ritual here is how it is and my mother told me so i mean like my mother told me so um several times and like so told a lot of like the saints here is how the rosary is a pagan ritual, is if you are just holding your rosary beads like Hail Mary Pilgrims, and you're not even paying attention to what you're saying, that is pagan. Pagans just start blubbering off words without thinking about the meaning. Like There is meaning behind the Hail Mary. There's meaning behind the Our Father. First, our Lord says to say the Our Father, so that's a given. But the Hail Mary, the first half of it is biblical. It's what the angel Gabriel said, so you're just repeating scripture in the first part. Reflect on the words of God. If you truly believe that the Bible is the word of God, then memorize it. Reflect on it. Why did the angel Gabriel actually say, Hail Mary? So, no, not praising because, well, I'm just repeating what Gabriel said to her. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
who said, blessed are thou among women? Well, Elizabeth said it as soon as Mary arrived when Mary was three months pregnant and Elizabeth was pregnant. And then she said, my baby has leapt in my womb, right? Who's that baby? John the Baptist. So we're just repeating scripture. Like, that's it. And then the back half, um, the back half is pray for us. I'm just asking my mother to like intercede for me. It's no different than asking someone like down the street, like, hey, can you, we all ask each other for prayers, right? I'm just asking my mother to pray for me. So no biggie. Okay. Um, but yeah, if, if you're just, stumbling and like stuttering or you know just saying it without meaning it is pagan and mary has said that in her apparitions like don't even bother because you're not praying um all right i'm gonna post some links from catholic bridge about it that's super helpful down below and what else oh last thing Last thing is about the glory bee. It actually comes from, this is also biblical too. First of all, it's a beautiful prayer. Glory be to the Father. Why are, like, we're giving glory to the Father. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. So if you believe in the Trinity, which we all do, Catholic or not, like, say the glory be in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You know, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end, amen. But that is Revelation chapter 4, verse Eight. All right. Honor your mother. Our Lord did. Just do it. All right. Leave me a comment below. Give this video a thumbs up. Tap that subscribe button. I'll catch up with you next time. God bless all of you. Take care. Bye.